Uh-huh. Don't be using that. I see where it is now. I can't put it on. You know, yeah. glass probably like shades right now. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Walker, mic check, please. Pastor Kevin L. Walker, mic check. Psalms 123, Psalms 122, and all the rest of the songs. You know, people call them. <laughs> okay, now we go again. All right, one, two, three, four, mic check. Pastor Kevin L. Walker, Nashville, Tennessee. Last time I checked, that's where I was. Am I sounding all right? Can I be going. quiet now? Lord is my shepherd. That's Dr. Henry there. <laughs> I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and some other stuff he makes me do too. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> now are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Is everything working out all right? Are we good? Are we good? I was glad. All right. I'm going to go with some scripture. Uh, uh, <laughs> Sergeant Benita Blue, mic check one, two, three. I'm getting <laughs> tips from from the from, from the doctor of you know mic check over here. Thank you for having us. We greatly appreciate it. Former student of Dr. Haney had to write many of papers, get up early, was it on Saturday or Sunday morning at six or seven o'clock to make sure I had to get all my notes again in order to do my paper and have it on time. Officer James Duke, one, two, mic check. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department and Community Relations. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about the uh, Metropolitan Nashville Police Department and uh, Community Relations, uh, Pastor Kay Walker. <laughs> and of course with uh, Pastor Kay Walker is Miss Bonita, uh, Officer, uh, Sergeant, really, uh, Benita Blue, B-L-U-E. I think yes. I've said that on many occasions, Miss Blue, when we had you as a student yes, uh, at uh, Tennessee State uh, University. And of course, uh, uh, Mr. James Duke has been with us uh, earlier, right. and I think you are chaplain. chaplain. Yes, I think uh, Mr. Uh, Duke yes, right. uh, with the Metropolitan Police Department. Right, and correct. let me welcome all three of you, Pastor Walker, you, uh, to the uh, show this morning. And let's start off, Pastor Walker, by having uh, you to uh, give us some statements in reference to your background your education and some of your experiences. Ms. Blue will do the same uh, in reference to her activities and of course Mr. Duke will do the same and by that time we should have uh, used the first six minutes and then we'll get into, we'll take a commercial break and we'll get back into uh, the uh, second segment of the show this morning and then we'll be able to move forward. All right okay. Dr. Haynes, as usual let me first of all thank you for the opportunity to come on the show and talk about some issues that's very pertinent to us and this is to me, you always see it from one side or the other, but you have the Metro Police officers on the set, and also myself as not uh, the voice of the community, but to speak to some of the concerns of the community. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think it's a unique situation here. My name is Pastor Kelvin L. Walker. I was born right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Attended the public schools in Nashville, Tennessee up until the time. Of course, uh, I'm not ashamed to say that I got kicked out of all the public schools in Nashville. I wasn't the a uh, guy of great character during that time in my life and uh, from there I uh, <clears throat> ended up getting in some trouble. I actually shot a guy when I was age 15, ended up at age 17 going into the military as a way to escape uh, being incarcerated. Judge Richard Jenkins saw that as the best route for me. I uh, had been experiencing with drugs and alcohol for many, many, many years of my life and uh, when I got out of the Navy, uh, didn't make it in there long, got out of the Navy and I went through OIC, Opportunities Industrial Relations Center. Uh, 
from there, I got a GED. From there, I went on to Tennessee State University, spent a little time with there. But all during that period of time, I was strung out on drugs, and especially heroin during that period of time. I uh, got strung out while I was in the Navy on heroin. But uh, after I got out, I got kicked out, not kicked out of Tennessee State. I had to drop out of there because I couldn't stay focused and ended up incarcerated after doing many crimes, incarcerated in the state prison system. I uh, did a total of actually four, five years of my life incarcerated in state prison system, in and out of jails and the like, in workhouses and stuff like that. Uh, but that's who I am, and that's where I am today. I had some great parents that raised me up the right way, but I chose to go the other way. But I'm here and thankful to be able to sit beside two metropolitan police officers and not run. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And, and, and I must say you're making a tremendous contribution, Pastor Walker, you see. Uh, and we're glad to uh, have you here with us uh, this morning. Miss Blue, what about you? Uh, uh, first of all, Sergeant Blue. <laughs> I'd like to say I'm honored to be in in the studio with my former professor that had, had me getting up early in the morning <laughs> working on papers and I want to say thank you. <laughs> that taught me some discipline getting up early in the morning. Uh, my name is Sergeant Benita Blue. I'm a police sergeant mm -hmm. over the East Precinct School Resource Division. Um, I cover, as of right now, nine elementary and high schools in that division. I've been on the police department for 11 years. I graduated from Tennessee State. Uh, undergrad in accounting, a master's in business. I, I fell into this profession. I had a, my best friend, her husband got killed in the line of duty in Memphis. And when I saw the officers come out to support her, and at that time their daughter was only just under one years old, and, they, and the city of Memphis and the officers around the country came out and supported her so greatly that it touched me. And also I knew of a young man who was afraid of the police. And I, and I decided to become a police officer in order to show youth that you don't have to be afraid of us. Uh, it's, you know, you can get to know us one-on-one. -on -one. So I've been blessed enough that I've been, a, I was an SRO in the middle school level at Bass and McKissick. Um, end up going into patrol. Then later I'm now a sergeant over the school resource division. So I'm back with my youth again and working with them mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And, and I think that's essentially what we want to hear, the information. And what we'll do, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, James Duke, yes. uh, is to, uh, Chaplain, give yes. you an opportunity when we come, come back on. after this uh, okay. first segment. We've okay. got about 30 seconds. Okay, so fine. I didn't want to that's get fine. into you yes, before sir. we come back. Okay. But when we come back, we'll start with you. Okay. We'll have you to uh, give us some information okay. in reference to your situation. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. then we'll be able to uh, go into our second segment okay. and uh, have... Uh, Blue oh, and right. Walker okay. to give us uh, some additional information okay. and we'll okay. depend upon uh, Pastor Walker to sort of lay out some of the issues because okay. I think he's issue oriented right. and I think that all of you are familiar with the kind of issues that we should talk about right. and we'll be back with our audience following this very very short mm -hmm. commercial break.
Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker, uh, Officer Blue, mm -hmm. and uh, Chaplain uh, Duke. And uh, before we had our first commercial break, uh, mm -hmm. the Chaplain, we promised that we would give you an opportunity yes. to talk about your background right. and some additional information. Okay. So take as much time as you wish, okay. and when you finish, then Ms. Blue will uh, give us some additional information, perhaps mm -hmm. based upon some of the things that you might say, okay. and we'll allow Pastor uh, Walker to help close us out okay. uh, uh, this eight-minute segment by okay. laying out some issues for us to talk about. Oh, Let's okay. start with that. Okay. First of all, Dr. Haney, it's good to be back on the show with you again, and I'm uh, Officer James Duke, Chaplain for the Police Department. I've been with the Police Department in a few months, be 28 years that I've served with the Police Department, and uh, for 18 years I've been serving as the Police Chaplain. And so uh, being the Police Chaplain, of course I'm the barrier of the bad news when there's deaths and with what's going on in the world that we see all over the world. Uh, one of the hurting things is when I see our young people has been murdered and having to go knock on the door, tell a, a mother, father that, that the child will not be returning. Uh, but other than that, there are some rewards in doing that because I get a chance to meet a lot of people and, and offer resources to people that may didn't know resources was at their form uh, within the community. And so, so I enjoyed you know, doing what I'm doing in that aspect of ministry. And I'm also a pastor. Uh, I'll be pastoring this November, be 20 years of the mm -hmm. St. Paul PB mm -hmm. Church mm -hmm. here in Nashville, Tennessee. You know, mm -hmm. I often think about you when I listen to the uh, mm -hmm. news in the morning and yes, hear sir. some of the uh, tragic things that are going on. Yes, and I think about uh, what you said in reference to right. your responsibilities, right. Chaplain. Right. And I think about you often. Uh, yes, Ms. Blue, what about you in terms mm -hmm. of uh, do you find uh, what you're doing to be challenging and what 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 could people do in order to assist you, <coughs> excuse me, in doing what you do? Uh, for my job, as my children like to say in the school system, they want you to keep it on 100. Mm -hmm. they, they mean they want you to be real with them. And I feel that if we can break down the barriers, even though you might be restrained about your title, or mm -hmm. the, you know, mm -hmm. if you can just be yourself, and let your community and your children see you as being a human being and relate to someone one-on-one, -on -one, of course the officer is going to have to do their job. But it does not mean you have to not be personable. And for me, if I'm personable with my kids, and I call them my kids because even though I did not give birth, I'm still responsible for them eight hours a day, five days a week. And for me, if I'm personable with them, even if I just say, hello, how you doing? Do you need anything? To me, I'm able to get a little bit more one on one. They feel comfortable with me. So they see me just more than a police sergeant or a police officer. They see me as a human being. And for that, that is for me the greatest thing, gift that we as officers can do is have a more personable one-on-one -on -one contact with our youth and with our community. I would, excuse me, Pastor, I would imagine that's just one of the real issues that we have throughout the nation uh, this morning, Pastor. I, I would say when she was talking about, you know, being personable, you know, mm -hmm. communication, you know, especially in the uh, African-American community, I think there's a general fear that police departments, police all over the nation that don't communicate on a level that brings about a, a certain amount, a level of trust mm -hmm. uh, between the community and the police department. I think there needs to be better communication between the two, you know, to make, you know, and, and I have a, that, now, I got to say that there was a time in my life that I had no regard, no respect for the police because I was a criminal. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you stay, try to stay away from the police yeah. as much <laughs> as you could. Yeah, huh? And, uh, you know, but at the same time, uh, I have a regard and I have a respect for the police and what they do because I understand today that they have a dangerous job, you know, mm -hmm. and I know that also there there are bad police officers and that there are good police officers. And I think uh, what the community is 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 upset about in a lot of situations is that not so much that they're the bad that that continue to do bad and they're not really punished for the bad they do but at the same time you have the good police officers yeah. who are not you know not standing up and not challenging the bad officers so it sends a message 
uh, it, uh, maybe even distorting the message, and probably is distorted, that it is distorted, that all police are bad, mm -hmm. just because the good ones are not standing up against the bad ones. So you take a guy that runs out here, grabs a, a rifle, and goes out challenging and shooting up and shooting at police officers and stuff like that, he's probably got a mentality that says all of them are bad, you know, which of course is, is an error, but you know, that's that mindset, that's that thought process. And I think that as the community and the police, if we get better communication, better relationship, I think we'll become better in solving crimes and everything like that because people will be able to feel freely to talk with the police officers and not feel like, or not feel intimidated, but to know that, okay, you're my friend, you know, mm -hmm. I can communicate with you. And, and I met Pastor Duke right. through ministry, right. you know, right. and, uh, right. and, and I had a guy that wanted to turn himself in. He had been wanting for some crimes. He called me up and mm -hmm. stuff. And ironically, it was the same guy that I had helped get out of prison, uh -huh. helped get back in, <laughs> in prison. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I was able to call Chaplain Duke because I knew it, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and we have a relationship right. and was able to uh, create that bond of trust between mm -hmm. Chaplain Duke and the, and the guy that they were able to meet Chaplain Duke, met him, they conversed, they met him, and he was able to take him down there and turn himself mm -hmm. in. And, and that's a great thing mm -hmm. because that communication was there, that trust was there. Mm -hmm. There was a, even, even of a sense of friendship there, right. you know, in that mm -hmm. situation. And, mm -hmm. and some of the things I would like for, to hear from the officers right. is that mm -hmm. how can we as a community uh, 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 Gain, put the officer at ease because mm -hmm. they got a job, man. Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine how hard it is walking up on a police uh, up on the car you stop, right. and and you right. got an individual in there. You don't know what's getting ready to right. go down, right. you know. Right. So your lives are in danger on a regular basis, and I I know that, mm -hmm. you know. I'm not a police officer. And and, and so what we'll do, uh, uh, Mr. Blue, uh, Officer Blue, we're going to take a, a break in about a minute or so. But uh, let me uh, raise a question uh, that. Uh, dealing with resources. I think you indicated that uh, uh, you uh, resource officer and et cetera. But do you think that if we could provide greater mm -hmm. resources in our communities, not only to the police department, but resources that will allow for the uh, uh, maintenance of uh, community centers and other activities yeah. that could draw these young people in, do you think that we might be able to uh, cut down on some of the crime and some of the violence that we experience in, this, in, in all of these communities? Absolutely. In my opinion, you can be a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer, a preacher. You have to have a connection with your community. It, that is the foundation. We can all be trained in our profession, but if you don't have a real connection, there's a disconnect. And for me, you got to have a pride not only within yourself, but you got to have a pride within your country. Just say like Nashville, for instance. You got to have a pride in Tennessee. You got to have a pride in Nashville. And you got to have a pride in your community. Get to know your resources in your area. I'm a uh, vice president of the National Black Police Officers Association. I work closely with the Tennessee Bikers Education Association, Metro Social Services. Okay, so what we'll do, we're going to take this final commercial break, and again, we're going to start with uh, okay. you, uh, Chaplain, okay. when we come back, and we'll okay. be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial okay. break.
Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. We're talking to Pastor Walker, uh, Officer Blue, and uh, Chaplain uh, Duke. And Chaplain Duke, let us uh, start with you uh, by having you to uh, talk about uh, mm -hmm. some of the issues that uh, we face and that you face in the Metropolitan Police Department okay. that uh, might be mitigated okay. if some of the people that you dealt with mm -hmm. had a job or okay. had some other kind of constructive from that perspective. Uh, okay, F first, first of all, um, perception uh, can make a break anything and a lot of times when it comes to law enforcement the perception is more negative than, than positive and so building relationships is very very important between the police department and and the community and earlier we was talking about some some resources and everything what can we do to help and I think it's important to involve the churches uh, in this because it takes us all to, to make it to work, all the citizens to be vigilant and to, to help out. But one of the things I was thinking, even in the churches, where during this time of the year, a lot of the churches, they have vacation Bible uh, school, where they have a lot of young people come in. And I think it would be good if they would invite an officer to come in uh, as part of that curriculum so they could talk to the young people mm -hmm. So they can get a feel and an idea how the police uh, operate mm -hmm. and, and everything. And, and I think it would be a, a big help because, number one, the, the children would be at a safe place that they will feel safe mm -hmm. at the church. Mm -hmm. and, it would, it, and I would rather go talk to a child or young people at the church versus at the juvenile mm -hmm. justice center. Be less threatening at less the church threat, as far as young people are concerned. Yes, they probably listen more than what yes, you sir. have to say than yes, if they are locked up. Right. And then you go just talk it's to It's a whole them. different yeah. atmosphere yeah. And, and, and a lot of more negativity than mm -hmm. a fall uh, What in that about you, uh, Officer Blue? Do you mm -hmm. find that... Uh, mm -hmm. That, that some of the young people simply don't uh, understand uh, your responsibilities uh, or their responsibilities? Or what, what's the case with you? I think a lot of times we base on what your job supposed to be about hearsay and also about social media. Yeah. So we need to get to know each other. That's right. And what some people do not realize, we have two great programs in the Metro, Department, uh, Metro Police Department. Mm -hmm. That's our youth services division. They have a program that works with the whole entire family. Mm -hmm. And also with the great program that's ran by, mostly by school resource officers, mm -hmm. there is a family component that we work with the whole entire family for six weeks. And there's also the component that we work with the youth in the fifth and sixth grade. So there are resources for the whole entire family to in order to bring a better foundation because without family and without communication, we will be lost on both sides. That's true. Uh, uh, Pastor, uh, in, 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 in terms of uh, uh, trying to meet some of these needs, what would you suggest as, as what we ought to do? Well, you know, I just I just heard something that I wasn't aware of, and that was the programs through the Metropolitan Police Department. I've never you know, heard of that yeah, either. I, I, I was not aware of that, and I'm not sure how many other people out here that may be not aware of that. And then at the same time, you know, how many people will be willing to embrace that, knowing mm -hmm. that, you know, if this, is an, if this is an avenue, if this is an outlet, you know, mm -hmm. for growth and advancement and, you know, development of knowledge, mm -hmm. then this is something that we should access, you know, mm -hmm. as a people. And... Uh, I, like I said, I just didn't, I didn't know that it existed. And, you know, I'm definitely going to be uh, inquiring about it, checking into it and finding out more about it and trying to do, steer and direct some people in, find out what the criteria and, and the like is all about it, you know. Uh, one of the things that, that really concerns me, Dr. Haney, is how we interact, uh, how the community interacts with the police department, you know. I think that a lot of situations could be diffused, uh, and a lot of times, a lot of these, a lot of sometimes, a lot of these violent situations that may occur between police and, and, mm -hmm. and individuals could be diffused uh, if, if, when stopped, we conduct ourselves mm -hmm. in, in a proper way. You know, mm -hmm. in terms of not being aggressive, not being, you know, attitudinal toward the police. You know, you know, why you stopped me? You know, I mm -hmm. wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, apparently, if you got stopped by the police, that was, that was, yeah. a, that was some reason. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be. A uh, legitimate reason might be a bogus reason. The fact is, there's a reason you stopped. And, you know and, what I'm saying? And, so. and, and since he stopped you, you are in a real sense in control of everything because your reaction to being stopped will determine his reaction. In a sense, uh, yes. His or her reaction in, sense, in terms of dealing I, with you. Absolutely, because I, I think if, 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 
my, I mean, I had encounters with the police, man, many times over my years as a criminal, you know, and, and I never got beat up by the police. I never got slammed up against the car, none of that stuff, because when they got me, they got me. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not getting ready to get smart with you and none of that mm -hmm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm not getting ready to provoke you to do nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Just take me on to jail. You know, I, I do what I got to do. But, you know, but some people, you know, and, and people fit a certain, it may not be actually profiling people but mm -hmm. at the same time people feel the profile mm -hmm. of who you who's dangerous or mm -hmm. who you got to watch mm -hmm. somebody some people are just red flags mm -hmm. and when they pull them over man some people you know man you sitting up there with your hair all in dreads man your mouth all tinned mm -hmm. out with that, that cheap gold mm -hmm. and stuff like that you know you got on some dark sunglasses well you look like you might do something, do something. not only to the police, <laughs> police. Also, but to me too <laughs> you know and a lot yeah, of other citizens uh -huh. around here uh -huh. so you know you can't say and i tell my grandchildren you know you can't you can't dress like a thug if you're not a thug mm -hmm. you can't look like you're a crook if you're not a crook mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying you gotta look the part you know and i would just like to hear from you all you know mm -hmm. what can a person do you know mm -hmm. when when they when they encounter a police officer in a, in a police traffic stop to keep the situation on a mellow terms one one of the things uh is to to let the owners know to remain calm no erratic movements mm -hmm. because that's one of the things the police are going to be watching for erratic movement and behavior mm -hmm. and things of that nature. And most of all, keep the hands at least where they could be seen at all times because the hands is what can hurt and, and what can, can, can kill or whatever the case may be in that sense. And so, so if it, and I would say wait until the police uh, approach and, and tell you why they stop you and, mm -hmm. and ask for whatever credentials they, they want mm -hmm. and everything and wait on them. Don't don't, don't initiate asking what did I do? Why did you stop me? Like he was saying, let the police and, and do say it with such an attitude as if you might be able to push the right, door open there you go. and get there, out of there and do right, something. There you yeah, go. I, I can understand. Yeah, there you that's, go. yeah that's, that's that's one of the issues. Uh, Officer Blue, you're dealing with uh, children in schools and et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, uh, what would you say to uh, uh, bringing about some kind of support from these young, uh, how do you get their support in terms of what you do? Now, you're over a, gr a group of folks, and, and how do your people react to, the people that you are supervising, react to uh, the children, and what would you suggest that they do if they're not doing it already? The key thing I see a lot of my officers doing, and a lot of officers in the county doing, they have open communication. Mm -hmm. They have an open door policy. A lot of times you can be having a situation, you don't have to give us personal names. Mm -hmm. You can say, I know of someone, if you don't want to use your own information, and we can get you the resources. And a lot of times, if my officers do not have the resources, they do not mind calling me. I have a young person I have that needs clothes or they need school supplies or they're they are experiencing some type of abuse. Now in some situations we have to make a police report because that's our job. But we are also we're there as a support system for not only for the school staff, but we also a support system for the young people. So my best thing for officers and people in general have an open communication and do not put up the walls well because this person is raised on South Sis or this because this person is raised in North Nashville you automatically assume and we already know what assuming means but you don't assume you give that person a clean slate how you want to be treated in life and somebody give you a clean slate and don't take the things that happened last year last month give that person an equal opportunity and once you break down those walls they don't mind coming to you and so i think over the last uh, minute and, and and a half that we have here uh, all of us can agree that there can be some kind of cooperation right. between uh, the police department right. uh, and uh, citizens right. and etc right. that will sort of uh, uh, diminish right. some of the uh, yeah. some of the violence that we find and right. and and and, and, uh, and the best way to do that is to be able to start each of us saying to ourselves what we have to do right. you see and then right. what we do determine what they will do once we're stopped right. in, in other words if, if if we don't do anything mm -hmm. they have that, absolutely right. no reason to do that's anything right. and that's so right. Uh, but but anyway, I just wanted mm -hmm. to uh, see if we could sort of get this group together and have right. some kind of statements made right. in reference to what the uh, police department is doing, in reference to what the community is doing, right. and what we all might be able to do in order to diminish the kind of conflicts that we find in our communities, not only in our communities, but all across the